Here we are with Dustin Pickering, Editor-in-Chief of Transcendent Zero Press and also Harbinger Asylum. In his hand, he holds the latest release from Transcendent Zero Press, hashtag Alive Like a Loaded Gun, by none other than, drumroll please, Lynn Lifshin. She has been dubbed the Queen of the Small Presses, has been the subject of a documentary film, and uh, has won many, many prestigious awards. Now then. Uh, we are here with Dustin today to talk a bit about the actual book and the process behind it. So, how on earth did we become so fortunate to get in contact with Lynn Lifshin, and how did she agree to do a book with us? Um, several uh, uh, months ago, I got an envelope uh, of uh, submissions from Lynn Lifshin, which I didn't know who she was. I looked at them and thought, hey, they're, they're nice, I like them. Uh, but I had no space, so I sent them back, as she requested, and I left a note saying, we'd love to publish you, but we can't do it right now, I'll just send some stuff later. She sent another batch, of, you know, a couple months later, and eventually, you know, it was, she gave, gave me a pretty good-sized batch, so I thought, well, what is she wanting us to do with these? And so I got on Facebook, and I found her, and I sent her a message, and I said, hey, I got your submissions, uh, but I don't know if you want a book, or if you want a... Uh, uh, if you just want some of these poems to appear in the journal. And eventually I kind of like book suggested we should do a book. And she said, oh, that sounds like fun. That'll be great. Let's do one. So uh, she kind of left, she sent me the, the poetry to go in it and she, she left everything to me. Just, I was to choose the poems and to name the book and to, to design the cover and do all the work for it. And other than that, she just sent the poetry and uh, we've got this book right here, hashtag Alive Like a Loaded Gun, which one of her book, her other poems in the book is called Alive Like a Loaded Gun. And I just thought it would be unique to have it as a hashtag, and that could also be an effective marketing tool. Agreed. Now, I love her taste in uh, subject matter when it comes to poetry. I've been reading a lot more of it online. Uh, it's very uh, accessible. But... Um, Two of my favorite sections, well, I'm sorry, three of my favorite sections in there uh, are the Ice Maiden. It's more archaeological. It's based on a, an actual Ice Maiden. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's in the book. There's a little description. There's also the Celtic Bird Goddess, very mythological. And last but not least, my favorite section, Enhedwana. And if for those of you who do not know, Enhedwana was not only the first woman to uh, sign her work, but also the first writer in general. And the fact that it was a woman makes it even more special and more awesome. Um, tell us more. There was a, there was a little um, redo with the uh, Enhedwana section. Yes, uh, Lynn sent me a, a pretty good sampling of files. And I'm not sure why or how, but a lot of those files were already published poems. And I went through them, and I didn't tell her, and I sent her the, the final draft when we were through running through it, and said, here's what we've got. And she got back in touch. She said, I'm sorry, but uh, the Enhedwana poems that you were putting in the book have already been published in another collection that was just published. And I said, okay, well, uh, what can we do? Because we've got the, the, the graphic design of the cover already designed for the 125 pages. And, uh, and I said, well, I'll tell you what, you know, she sent me some Ice Maiden poems to replace the, uh, the uh, poems, uh, the Enhedwana poems I had already put in. And so I put those, pe those poems in, and I said, you know, I've marketed this book already. I've already sent out an ad in a description with the, the notice that there would be Enhedwana poems in the, as, as one of the personas. And she, uh, she said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll try to write some new ones. So... Um, in the next day, she sent me about a collection of 15 new Edwana poems and uh, basically said, this is what I've got, and I looked over and reviewed them. was very impressed with them. I thought they were, you know, a piece of miraculous work. I really thought they were great. Uh, I was proud that they were going to go in our book that we were publishing. And so I stuck them in there, and you know what? It was about 128 pages after that, so I ended up not going too far beyond what we had planned uh, with the cover and so the cover you know is flexible uh, to you know a certain degree and uh, we did a, you know just in general it, it fell together very well 
Wonderful, wonderful. Now, Q, uh entice the readers a little bit. Tell them what they can expect from such a brilliant piece of work like this. I think mostly what you will see is an insight into the female psyche. Um, you, you, you'll see kind of uh, uh, the doubts and the dark sides and the, you know, uh, the uh, personal struggles through the forms, of, you know, poetic forms of uh, the Ice Maiden and the late, the Swan, you know, the Swan Daughter, the Leda's uh, daughter, um, you know, things like that. And they're very haunting and, and just, uh, there's very surreal situations created in the book. As well as things like the Celtic Bird Goddess where you see a myth turned into a f aesthetic almost. Uh, there's a little philosophy there. And that philosophy is um, kind of deals with you know general life and how life and aesthetics combine. And uh, you know you'll see if you read it, you'll read through it, and, and it'll just you know it will uh, astound your mind, and uh, you basically uh, walk away more uh, in tune with life. I think, uh, and as you're exploring the, the the dark and the surreal and the hauntingness of uh, the poetry, um, you'll probably uh, feel a, a little bit more at ease with yourself, uh, knowing that this is something that's within us and that it's something we can accept. Um, and I think also, uh, as you read the Ice Maiden poems, things like that, you'll be informed on history, on a uh, you know, very creative way of bringing to life this, uh, this figure that was trapped in ice. Uh, and, and, you know, she has this great poem where the Ice Maiden speaks to the Unabomber of all people. It's a very interesting juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody that reads those poems will not be able to say that they have never read a, cre a really creative and powerful poetic work. So I think even non-poets can take a look at this and go, wow, this is uh, something to, to be uh, jealous of. I mean, she's a great poet. She's always been, you know, from what I've seen, just she goes with the muse, or maybe not the muse, but her own, her own uh, flight. You know, she's written poetry about horses and and uh, you know uh, all kinds of things on different subjects, and she just doesn't stop. She's probably got a huge catalog of poems somewhere. Uh, probably has a whole attic somewhere <laughs> of poetry. Because from what I've heard from her, she, you know, she told me when I first met her. On fa through Facebook, um, she told me originally she's like, I have a poems I've written just poems I've written just in the last you know the decade the 90s decade and she said I'll send you some, so that was what was part of this. But then we reworked it and made it into this full collection, alive like a loaded gun. Hashtag if you want to help us out, put the hashtag on Twitter or somewhere, Facebook, and say something nice about the book. You can buy this for fifteen dollars. Two dollars of each sale goes to helping Syrian refugees, so uh, we have that plotted and in, 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 uh, in tow. So please, you you not only be doing a humanitarian thing by buying this book, you will be intrigued, enlightened, and full of fresh new energy. Definitely. And one final word before I I uh, conclude. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the fact that uh, it keeps that pattern with uh, with ancient women, whether they uh, existed or not. You could almost feel their struggle within the poems, but also feel them conquer every obstacle that came their way, whether whether the whether the tone was more sarcastic, whether it was war torn, whether it was um, just first discovering an entirely new creative outlet. Um, I, I, that's that's definitely what I found within many of these poems. Hashtag alive like a loaded gun, available on Amazon, and uh, it is by Liv Lynn Lifshin. Please read her other work as well. And www.lynnlifshin.com. Definitely, you will find a great biography, a nice little catalog, some poems on there as well, and other fun surprises.